Now, welcome back to the channel, all my hustlers and grinders and go-getters, and we're back with another video. It's Matt in the JoJo, and today we got a special guest out of Dallas, Texas. Who is it, JoJo? Oh, we have Ricardo with Junk Guys DFW, and I think that we're going to end up having lots of people join us because the great minds of junk removal that are going to come together and give so much inside wisdom tonight. You are in the right place. If you're wanting to learn how to do your business better and just inside scoop on all that good stuff. So you are definitely in the right place. And let's say hi really, really quick to Kevin, Todd. We got Steven, ooh, Chris from Clutter Reductions and Andy Henderson, who is a channel member. Thank you for joining us and Jamie Reyes. So that's awesome. Ooh, Jamie says she got money. He or she is getting money today. And now here in California right now, it is like springtime. The weather is so beautiful. The phone is ringing off the hook. We've been working every single day but Sunday. So yeah. we, we've been getting money out here. So hopefully you have too. Yeah, because uh, it was yesterday I seen the uh, cherry blossoms blooming. And I have a saying every spring that says when the flowers start blooming, junk removal starts booming. So make sure you guys smash that like button and we're going to introduce Ricardo. Oh yeah, we gotta junk get started. Guys DFW. Yeah, we gotta get started. So let's right let him in the building. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo, brother. Woo -wee. Woo! Loving that win yesterday. Go Cowboys! Yeah. What are you talking about? The Cowboys did not win yesterday. <laughs> yeah, man. Listen, I know y'all are jelly down there. You know, I know that nobody in the San Francisco area, but Cowboys Super Bowl champs, Dak Prescott, he baby. Is tripping. He's crazy. He's what crazy. What are y'all talking about, man? He got the award yesterday at the, the game. He was at the Super Bowl yesterday. It was Kansas City and Philadelphia. You must be watching some old ass videos. What are you talking about? Dude, the suit, Matt, I'm sorry. JoJo, you you can you you vouch for me. You saw the game. Dak was at the start of the game. He got his award. Come on, man. What are you talking about, man? You're so mistaken. Oh my God. Are you drunk right now or what? No, no, this is tea, brother. I'm celebrating the big win. This is like the Super Bowl win, it man. Griffin, JoJo. Dak Prescott, number one, Super Bowl Lombardi trophy. Honey, 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 come here. I got JoJo and Matt. They don't believe me that Dak won the Super Bowl. What? What? He was, he was at the game. Yeah, but no. What are you doing? He won Man of the Year. Man of the Year? Yes, you need to he, change. You need to change. He won Man of the Yes. You need to change for real. Yeah. That's not embarrassing. The Super Bowl. Not the Super Bowl. Thing, honey. I'm sorry. You need to change. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Matt. Uh, JoJo, give me one, one sec. Are you serious, Mom? I, I swear. I couldn't. I couldn't yes, swear. He was there, but he won Man of the Year. Oh, I thought he. I thought he won the Super Bowl. Man, no. 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 for real. Are you? I thought he won the Super Bowl. No. I. I honestly thought. I'm I mean, so sorry. He was at the start of the game with the trophy and everything, and no. I just like was thinking he won it. Stop. No, honey, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. Trust me, guys. This video is gonna be fire once we get into it. Huh? Uh, hey, guys. Uh, first, I want to apologize. Apparently, he won Man of the Year, not the Super Bowl trophy. Okay. So, you know what, uh, Matt and JoJo, uh, if we don't talk about that anymore, I'll be glad with that. <laughs> I just want to say I'm sorry. It's all good. It's all good. So, for the viewers that don't know who you are, let them know who you are. Who is Ricardo? I am six foot one out of the state of Texas, Dallas. Come in point guard. Oh, I'm sorry. I was giving the intro for the NBA. I'm sorry. Uh, my bad. My bad, guys. Um, so I am a local junk removal company serving the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. I've been doing this for about 15 years uh, now. And right now I'm a one-man team. And I have a lot of people that work with me. Um, yeah, that's overall what I do. I, I a lot of people, you know, I've been doing YouTube for about 12 years, but I've been doing junk removal for about 15 years. And overall, it's been a, kind of a success for me. 
for the balance. That's great. That's great. And then, you know, what, what made you decide like junk removals where it's at? Like, that's what you wanted to do. You know, uh, good question. Junk removal was not what I wanted to do. And there's a good story about it, Jojo. Uh, the fact is that I, I, I was doing, I borrowed my dad's van and I was doing moves from, uh, apartment complexes and I was talking <laughs> people $250 to move from one apartment to another apartment. And that was it. And one day I showed up to the lady's house and she's filling up my van with trash. And literally it was just trash. And I told the lady, ma'am, I, what do I do with this trash? Trash. And she said, well, why don't you just move it from here to the landfill? And I was like, what's a landfill? Uh, she paid me $400 and then the rest was history, really. I started just posting on Craigslist and I think Facebook and Craigslist was, Craigslist honestly was number one for me for a long time. <laughs> nice, nice. So how long you been in the business for? You said 15 years? I've been doing uh, junk removal for 15 and I started my channel about 12 years ago. 12 years ago? Okay. Yeah. Now, so where, where can all the viewers find you at? Just give your uh, YouTube channel a plug real quick. I if you get on YouTube, just go and uh, type in junk removal service and I come up first. Nice, nice. So um, being since you, you know, you started doing YouTube 12 years ago. So, you know, really, that would have put you as being one of the very first people doing, um, you know, talking about junk removal on YouTube. So how did you learn the trade not having you know, a bunch of other, because nowadays people, you know, they type it and they get our videos, they get your videos, they have all kinds of people. So how'd you learn? You know, well, when I started uh, 15 years ago, there was two companies out here. Uh, of course, the big dog is 1-800. And then there was another company called Dallas Junk Juggers. They were called Junk Juggers. They had a big old truck. And I was always impressed with their truck. I was like, man, one day if, if I do this, you know, I hope I get as big as they do. And, you know, as I decided to start posting on uh, Craigslist and getting jobs, um, the guy called me out of the blue and he said if I wanted to buy his two trucks, his big old trucks. And I said, why? He goes, it's just something I don't want to do. I'm too old. And, and next thing you know, I, I just started doing junk removal. I, you know what, Jojo? I forgot the question you asked me. Oh, um, you know. Every we're kind of lucky now because when we want to learn about junk removal, well, you can type it in, and there's all kinds of YouTube. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember the question. So you're, yeah. you're about the YouTube video. So um, back then there was nobody to learn from. You couldn't find out what pricing was, so I was pricing everything wrong. You know, I was doing shingles like twenty or twenty-five squares of shingles for two hundred bucks. I had no idea what I was doing. You know. Um, refrigerators, I was charging like $20. Um, and I charge 45 now, but it's still so cheap, but it was such a, it was such a challenge. Cause I couldn't call. And you know, one thing Jojo and Matt is I want to tell you, I never, never once did I call 1-800-JUNK and ask him for pricing. I never did that. Even though I was so lost, I never did it because I said, I want to build this business, but build this business because of the money that I need. So if I like needed to eat that week or something like that, and I only needed to make $300, I really aim for those $300. But learning from people, it was just not there. You know, it was not there. So I started doing these videos on YouTube and I started doing them with my Google Pixel phone. And then I got ranked number one on Google. Um, and then I just started, you know, I sat down. I remember, I remember the day that I decided to make this job professional because, um, the, fo the phone wasn't ringing. I went to Barnes and Nobles and I bought books. I bought like a stack of books. And then I went into my office, AKA the restroom. And I left them to the right of the toilet. And I said, eventually I'm going to read them because I spend so much time in the toilet. And then um, in about, you know, two, three weeks, all the books were done. And then I learned SEO. I learned how to rank my, my website. I learned about the YouTube. I learned about, you know, social media. Uh, J, you know, tags, HTML, um, kind of so much I learned just by those books. And I educated myself to, to know all that stuff. 
And long term, it worked out for me. But these these days, people want you just to do a video and let them cheat off your stuff. You know, they don't want to put in the hard work. Yeah, um, it actually the that leads me to my next question, which is explain to viewers what SEO is for people who may not know what SEO is. Okay. So uh, first I want to say uh, hi to uh, Junk DFW. He's been paying the MJ Deep said something earlier. Thank you guys. I uh, appreciate anybody up there. If I ignore you, sorry about that. Uh, SEO, which means search engine optimization. Uh, trust me, Jojo, when someone said that to me, I was totally lost. Me too. You me know, too. 13, 14 years. This is not 15 years. This is like, like 12 years ago. I've been running my business and just posting on Craigslist. I didn't even have a website. I was just posting on Craigslist. And then um, I started reading about this word called SEO. Didn't know what it meant. I just kept on reading about it. And then it meant search engine optimization. It's a way that the search engine of Google, uh, it crawls your website. They send these little robots that crawls their websites. They're called bots. Uh, they get the information. They register in the directory of Google. And then um, it gives you some optimization to your website. So I figured I would build, well, a, a top of the line website. Hopefully I'd get ranked. Um, but there's, Jojo, there's so many things to SEO. There are so many things to SEO that um, I could talk about that for hours. But on the social media side, it's very important that you put your content out there. I will tell you, put your content out there. And this is including everybody that we're talking to, guys. MJP, Carrie, Chapter 2, Trash It, Todd, John, uh, all y'all guys, put content out there. And I'm not talking about videos. No, no, no. I'm not talking about videos. It's like the, one of the things that I use. It's a platform that I use. But I'm just talking about information, you know, information. Uh, there are so many people, gimmicks out there, people doing SEO and having to pay for it. Don't do that, man. That's crazy. And I see somebody down here that says, SEO is never a bad investment. Evergreen work that pays dividends over the long term. SEO, if it's if you're spending money on SEO, it is a bad investment. If you do it yourself and learn about it and establish yourself as a good working person that can actually do the work, it'll do wonders, man. It'll do wonders. It is um, it is one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on is because um, I did hear uh, I heard you at JumpCon and uh -huh. I heard so many things about your story that I didn't know. And I was looking at Matt and I was like, oh, like he does. The, he, he did his organic, too, because we did ours all mm -hmm. organic. We never paid for anything. We've never paid for Google ads. Um, we um, did, you know, all of our uh, free social platforms and we just post, post all the time and post, post leaving the link to your website and get traffic to your website and just all this stuff that you can do all the time, absolutely for free. All it does is take time. Um, and I heard you on the stage and I was like, yeah, like I didn't know that Ricardo kind of does he just it's the same. And I thought, you know, um, if we have him on, we're really going to delve into the importance of um, of SEO and how you really can generate that on your own. Yeah. Now, how, now, how often do you post a day, would you say, just so the viewers know? I mean, on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. OK, this is Google of, my business. How many times a day? <laughs> this is kind of embarrassing. So uh on a daily basis, I'll post about 15 to 20 times. Um, and it takes me about maybe five minutes. It's not very long. The longest thing are the videos. They take me about an hour or two hours. But th this is the thing about it, uh, uh, Matt and Jojo. Um, it's every individual is going to be different. Every there's, there's people that are going to be hard workers and there's going to be people that are very lazy people. And and. I schedule in my head, I schedule my SEO for the day as a work hour. So for instance, everybody works from nine to five. Okay. I get off at three from four to five. I'm doing a video. I'm posting every video that I post. 
I automatically upload that video to Tumblr, LinkedIn, uh, eBlogger, uh, Facebook, of course, and YouTube. That's five times more than anybody else on this list is going to do a video if they are even doing videos. So that's five times. But in the morning, I'm working Google My Business. I'm posting on Google My Business or uh, I'm posting something corny on, on, on TikTok. That, by the way, I had a video go four million. That was pretty cool. And, you know, just anything like that that you can do for your business. And I'm telling you, it will enhance anything you do. So I'm going to give everybody a, a really uh, a key. It's just something that y'all can think about. Uh, maybe a, what is it called? A, a clue, not a clue, uh, a secret, okay? A little gold uh, nugget. A little, a little nug nug, you know what I mean? A little, a nugget. little nug. Okay, here's a gold nugget. Whenever you use an Android or a uh, Apple phone and you take a picture, um, that phone goes into, uh, that picture goes into your phone, okay? And Whenever you grab that picture and put it on your desktop, what is the name of that Mac? Just throw a name out there. That what is the computer going to call that name? That 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 picture. What's that picture going to be called? Yeah, I would, I would just change the name to whatever you want to post it as: junk removal, couch exactly. removal, in a certain city or a zip code. Well, that name, when you upload it to your desktop, it's mm -hmm. actually called two one five three one three x y dot jpeg. I go and I'll put a lot of pictures on my desktop. I'll, I'll click them all at one time and I'll change them to this. Junk, comma, trash, comma, removal, Dallas, comma, garbage, calling, dot, hot tub. And then I upload them to my website or I upload them to Facebook. A lot of people don't realize that I have a lot of pictures that rank that are nine years old, man, that I call... Dallas, junk, trash, all in common, common between I don't, everything. Uh, that little nugget that you could do is considered SEO. And that will enhance just pitch. That's just one small, small little part of SEO. And I learned that from reading the books. Nice, nice. So that's something I do every single day when I'm at jobs. I'll take a picture where I'm at, what city it is, if it's a couch, a mattress. And then when I throw it on Google My Business and feed it, I'm doing pretty much the same thing, putting in the city, the zip code, and what I did. And I feed my Google business, my I feed Google my business pretty much every single day at every single job I do. So I'm yeah. just feeding it photos and photos and photos. I know a lot of guys out there, they're not doing that. And every single morning, it's what he does. He has his coffee and you know, <laughs> Facebook, and then he does his uh my little routine. I might be in the bathroom in, in my office doing the same thing. Um Here, here's a Go ahead. I'm sorry, JoJo. Go no, ahead. Okay. I just really quick because uh, Junk DFW goes, is JoJo taking notes? And yes, you caught me. He gave <laughs> a gold nugget and I wrote that gold nugget down. And you can bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow I'm uh, changing the name of some pictures. I uh, Stephen from School Academy uh, Alchemy says, I tag pictures and phone and videos before uploading. Pretty smart. Uh, Jamie Ria says, hometown hauling. I'd like to thank Matt and Jojo and uh, Gambino says Ricardo's the godfather. Oh, thank you, Gambino. Appreciate that. But I saw something earlier, a correction. Gage Root had said investment of time and energy, not investment of money for SEO. That's what he meant. And, and you know, after reading it, Gage, I, I, I looked at that and I said, he's probably thinking about time, <laughs> not the money that he spent. But um, I think uh, I'm going to I'll tell you something else. Uh, I work with about 25 companies in the DFW. So I have my chat on my phone and I chat, you know, we're all in this group. It's called the Google chat. We're all in this group and you have to be invited by me. Um, out of those 25 companies, this is crazy. Everybody's a junk removal owner, but there's only one company on that that has a website that's actually legitimate. Me, That's legit. And that's my website. There are people on that that don't even have a website. I bet out of that whole group, there's at least 15 of them that use a Google. You know those Google free websites that they give you on Google? My yeah. Yeah. They have one of those. And it blows my mind. It just blows my mind. My website is a powerful tool. I mean, it is so such a power. Well, 
first of all, Matt and, jo Matt and Jojo, I want to correct myself. The website's 12 years old. That counts for a lot. You know, longevity is 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 top notch. But it's such a powerful website. And it's it's got you get on it, you get pricing, you get pictures with tags on them, you get videos with tags on them, you get so much information, you get a booking platform, you have a header, you have a footer on the bottom with the name, you, you have a page that talks about me on it. I mean, it's got so much power. And then you look at my competitors and I'm like, dude, how are you going to compete with junk guys if your website looks like crap? If you put no effort to it. So I'm going to go back to what people are, what I was saying earlier. There are people that like to work and there are just people that are lazy, you know, and it, guys, you'll pay. This is what I, another thing that blows my mind, Matt, is that Matt, believe this, that people will pay for leads. They'll pour a hundred, 200. $500 a month on leads when they could have spent that money sitting on their computer, just putting, building a page and save that money right there. And they just put that money in their pocket and not, maybe take their daughter out to Jack in a box or Chuck E. Cheese or whatever. But instead they rather pay somebody to give them leads that aren't established very great. And some of the leads are bad. I mean, there's been, you know, it's, it's just, it surprises me how people won't put that effort into uh, into their website and website, you know, I I don't, I don't know how many bookings y'all get a, a week uh, on your website, but today I got three, which was abnormal. But I average about maybe four or five a week, which is great for me. Um, and then tomorrow I might not have any, but in a month I'll average about 25, 30. In a month, that's a lot of bookings. Why? Because my website's a powerful piece of content to me. Anybody can build a website. Gambino, Jamie Reg Reyes, John Park, Trash It. Y'all can build these powerful websites. It's your choice. You don't want to do it. You, you, you just don't want to put the effort into it. I don't understand that part. So one thing I've noticed when people call us up, they say, hey, I watch all your videos. We love your videos. How can I get more business? And the first question I ask them, do you have a Google My Business? Do you have a website? Are you, are you on Facebook? Are you on Instagram? And you'll be surprised how many people say, I got a website. And I'm asking them, did you put any keywords in that website? Are you like adding pictures? Nope, they're not doing that. Or they haven't done the Google how, My how Business. How do you do that? Or... What is that? Or I don't have a Facebook. I'm not good on social media. There, there's a lot of lazy people out there that need to step their game up. If you don't, if you don't know um, how, if you if you are not good at social media, learn. Get find somebody that's good. Talk to your kids. Your kids know. And it, there's not a reason why you can't learn. I knew nothing, zero about a website. And I um, went in there and just learned. And, you know, if you want it bad enough, you'll do it. anything like if, you can do anything if you want it bad enough. Just learn how to do it. You're absolutely correct. It's it's uh, it's the hours and the work that you put into it, it pays off, you know, and I, I my dad used to tell me that all the time. You know, if you put your hard work into it, it'll work. I'm, and I'm, I'm now I'm saying this in your video. I, I, I sound like my dad's still alive telling me this stuff. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, what you're saying, Jojo, is absolutely correct and stuff. And there's people, there's people a lot of, oh, look, you're the godfather of junk removal and the king and queen. Oh, you're the king and queen. I'm the godfather. Okay. Better Kerber Appeal says, that is one thing I regret when I first started just junk removal before my business model changed was using, oh, Angie's leads. Okay. Yeah. Um, let me see what else it says. Because we often, we often tell people in our videos to, um, to not, you know, don't pay for leads. And one of the biggest reasons um, that I feel it is so important to lay that organic reach foundation down is that if you have it in your website, you have it on your Instagram, your Facebook, you're posting all the time, Google My Business, you're constantly saying, you know, ooh, couch removal in Santa Rosa, 95429, you know, just you're constantly, constantly doing that because what you want is to eventually have a really, really firm foundation of organic SEO because if you start this right off the bat, paying for Google leads, paying for this and that, then um, you are actually going to be, this is how I feel, 
you're going to be a slave to paying for your Google ads because you've never, because once you stop paying for your Google ads, your phone stops ringing because you've never tried really hard to have your organic search engine optimization reach. You know, you, you know, when you're, you're right when you say that you're a slave to it. Uh, you know, uh, when you're born in, you know, you're, you're born either rich, you're born medium household or you're born uh, poor. You're born in a third world country like Ukraine or Africa or whatever. I don't know where the third world countries are. Or you're born to a billionaire father and mother. And when you start your junk removal business, you don't know what the hell you're doing, dude. You, you just started a business because you you think you're Mexican and you can work really hard at this. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of Mexican people in my area, you know, and I'm Mexican. So it, it's just like. There's two things. You got to be good on the computer. You got to be good at working. And you don't know when when you're building, you're getting into this business, you're opening your eyes like a baby for the first time. And you're realizing, oh, my God, I can do this work. But where do I get the work from? You know, where do I get that from? You got to put in the work for it. I put so many videos out there. I got over 2,700 and something videos out there. And half of them were telling you, to be better than me, build a company that's better than me. I've given you the blueprint. Here it is, but you still don't follow it. I mean, it blows my mind. It just blows my mind. I, it, it's it's weird to me that a lot of people have these really crappy websites and don't use the power of the website to enhance their business and make more money with it. Yeah, it's crazy that you say that because out here in California, there's a city called Brentwood. And I drove by there when we were looking at our houseboat, going over there to visit. And there was no bullshit, like 15 to 20 different junk haulers waiting at Home Depot with nice trucks just sitting there waiting with no website. Really? Inside their truck is just ridiculous that they're just sitting there. And I guarantee they got no website. They got no Google My Business. They're just waiting for the jobs to come in, someone to drive by. And wow. we have all these free videos out here on your channel, on our channel. But a lot of people, they just don't take that information and use it, which is crazy. Yeah. We have Better Curb Appeal says, I watch both of y'all's videos. Um, it is why I do more organic marketing than uh, other than door hangers and bandit signs. Why not do all of that? Because uh, we do, we do all of our um, organic marketing and we do door hangers and we do bandit signs and we just, I mean. So, Jojo, I'm realizing you have really bad eyesight because you every time you answer something, you like lean forward and then it says, I watch both of y'all and then you just throw in crap. You just make up stuff. You're like, I watch both of y'all's videos and, and I was like reading it. And I'm like, what's going on? You, you, you don't, you have bad eyesight, right? She's making it sound a little bit better, I think. Oh, oh, I think they left out some words. I was just adding the words they left out. Now, here's here's a question for you. How much business do you get off your YouTube channel? Um, <coughs> you know, uh, that's a great question, uh, Matt. That's a really good question. I average uh, on a weekly basis, I, I guess, if I had to throw a number on it, um, Let's say I go to 10 houses. Let's say I go to 10 houses in a, in a week. Let's just say that. Um, I guess uh, five of them will notice me off YouTube. They know it's me, you know, and they say my name. They have their hair fixed because I'm going to film or whatever, you know. Um, and then there's uh, some weeks that nobody recognizes me, you know what I mean? So it's kind of up and down sometimes, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, YouTube does bring me business. But my core of my business uh, is my website. It's my website. It's my postings that I do. Uh, uh, it's not Google My Business, Matt, like you were mentioning earlier. And, and Google My Business is such a powerful tool. But I've noticed that with the updates that Google's been doing with their algorithm and the way they're establishing hashtags and doing different stuff on social media sites, that Google My Business is, is, is a dying business. To me, it's, a, it's slowing down. I'm still posting on it. But I can tell that it's not as powerful as it used to be three or four years ago. Um, I, I think what Google does is they go through the process every 
three or five years they're going through this process. Let's make this important and this less important. Let's make website SEO more important. Let's put Google My Business down and let's make hashtags more important. Let's put footers more important. Let, let's make, you know, and, and I think that's what's happening with Google My Business right now. Um, but overall, just just being able to build a really good uh, site, we'll do, we'll do it for you. And again, I forgot the question you asked me. That's all right. I That's forgot. Okay. I, I forgot too. So here's a question for you. <laughs> I noticed that you got a bunch of different websites. Can you let the viewers know why you have a bunch of different websites? Yes, I do. So I have, I think, uh, 18 websites. Um, so when I first built my first website, it was junkicedfw.com, and I was ranked number one. And any, anytime you type in junk removal service, I was just ranked number one. Um, and then as the years grew, I noticed that there was so much more competition. So my junkroomable.com, I decided to get rid of the site and add a .net to the end of it. And what I was really trying to show was my viewers is that it doesn't matter if it was .com or .net. I could build the website just as powerful as the most original one. Uh, before I took down junkguysdfw.com, I had the other one ready. Uh, it was already ready. And I just built it more powerful. And, well, it surpassed anything I ever thought of. But here's a really key. This is kind of secretive um, that I don't really tell much people. But if you type in junk removal service, I don't come up on the first page. I do not. You know, I come up if you say hot tub removal, number one, trampoline, number one, washer and dryer, number one, fridge removal. That's I'm so high on fridge removal that I'll slap you in the face. If you put Arlington junk you know, Arlington fridge or Frisco fridge, that's when I come up. It's these individual things that I pinpointed because everybody was going to use the word junk removal. I did not. I don't use that word at all. I use uh, single items and that what powers my business. And that's why I'm able to do the things I do. And, you know. Now, do you have different websites for like different items? Like oh, they yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I have a, I'm sorry. that was the question. Um, so then as, as the business is building, Matt, uh, as the bu business is building, I'm starting to realize how SEO works and how websites can power and move your whole business and, and can establish you down the journey of junk removal. I'm learning it and I'm noticing times are going. I mean, doing this 15 years, you start noticing stuff. I started going, you know what? How about if I build a website for pianos in the Dallas Fort Worth area? So I build a piano website and people call me of it. Now, they don't call me all the time but it works okay uh, and then i do a hot tub i did a hot tub page one page dedicated to hot tubs and i put it out in south lake texas well 50 percent of my business for hot tubs is in south lake texas why because i built that website and then i started building individual websites for instance if you type in grand prairie uh you know hot tub removal or trampoline removal i come up and it's a website that i built 10 years ago it's a website that i have done no work on in 10 years and it comes up so i built these websites depending on the city and pinpointed that city um so a lot of them are sub sites but they're powerful sub sites and they work for me uh it, it just depends how much work you want to put into it and how where you want your business to go you know what i mean if you want to make a million dollars or you want to make you know a hundred thousand dollars that that's the kind of work that you'll put into your business. You know what I mean? And then everybody's an individual. Some people just want to live check to check and some people want to live month to month. That's a big deal living month to month, you know, but some people live check to check, which is week to week. I, I did not want to live like that. I didn't want to live week to week or month to month. I want to live six months to six months or a year to year. Um, putting your work into these websites and as many websites I have, uh, yes, Matt, I, I built a lot of websites pinpointing the cities or the actual uh, service I was going to offer. Hot Tub Arlington, Hot Tub Frisco, Texas. And I just started pinpointing those cities. So that's what I started. And I do videos like that, too. Uh, I'll pinpoint the video on the description or the title. I'll just say, you know, um, the, the, the thumbnail on the video says uh, something like had a hard time. 10 jobs in one day. And then the title actually says uh, junk removal and trash ha hauling Bedford Praxis. I've noticed that you uh, have yeah. places on your, yeah. um, on your titles really quick. We have master junkers um, said something and then somebody else brought it up too. And the reason why I clicked on it and I'm going to talk about it for a minute 
is um, I actually didn't know what this was. And I seen it today and I looked it up and I was like, that's kind of a cool tool. And um, so Master Junker says, I just used Ch chat GPT to add 22 pages of content to their website in the last two days to really, you know, um, amp up their SEO. And I, I wouldn't have known before today what chat GPT is, but it is something that you can use that really helps you with your wording in your content. So um, look it up and learn a little bit about it. It might be something you're interested in trying to use. I've read about it before. I've done some. I've done some research about it. I I think it's a um, a power generation a generator of content or something like that. It, yeah, like, for like blogging or whatever. Yeah, and then it, it builds like uh, content for you on your website. Uh, yeah, it you can say like um, it it will actually actually the reason why I looked it up is it's supposed to have helped with YouTube titles. It said like. Uh, um, you know, give me, you know, 10 titles that have to do with, you know, this, this and that. And, um, and that it's highly searchable and then it will like, boop, bring you a bunch of interesting things like that. But, um, she was using it for her, uh, website. If you're... Okay. So let's go back to building a page on, on, on a website. If you're going to go, and I tell this to everybody that calls me. You want to grab a page from my website and copy it and insert it on your website you're welcome to i don't i don't care i have so many websites it doesn't matter which one you steal it from but i will tell you something it's called originality google looks at this they know when there's a line that is similar in every damn website out there so if i put down there the number one junk removal hauling company in the dallas fort worth metroplex you call, I'll haul, and I'll get it done today. They grab that and they put it on their website, you're going to get flagged. You're going to get flagged. They know that you're stealing information from my website and put it on. Hell, Joe, they know when you take a picture in Kalamazoo on the other side of the earth at 8.52 p.m. on an Android or an Apple phone, how are they not going to know that you copy and pasted something? Yeah. Come on. They spend billions of dollars to research this stuff. Every year, Google spends billions, not millions, billions of dollars. So these, uh, the reason I never used that, I read about it, uh, is because I just don't think they're, it's original. It's original work. You know what I mean? I just don't think it's original. So, and I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I haven't done much research about it, but I might look into it, I guess. Just read about it. Now, where's most of your business come from? Uh, so most of my business comes from my website. Uh, I would say social media and then probably uh, Google my business and then YouTube. Okay. Yeah. But if I ask my customers, I guess they're going to probably say YouTube. Now, let me ask you a question. What is junk guys? Is it a franchise? Is it a name that you let people use? I see it out in Sacramento, right. LA and in Austin. What, what is junk guys? So I started junk, junk guys and I worked with um, Jose and Jose said he was moving to Houston. And I said, well, Jose, why don't you start a junk? He said, he told me he wanted to start a junk removal company. Now this is about 12 years ago. And I said, well, Jose, it's hard to lose you as an employee. Why don't you go over there? I'll build a website for you. I'll build all the infrastructure of the website. Um, and that's SEO. Um, Google my business. But you got to do this to keep it up. I told them it's a, it's a rolling, it's a mouse in a, in a wheel. In a wheel. You got to keep on doing it. And we called it Junk Ice Houston. I built them the website. It got ranked really fast. That one got ranked like in eight months. It got ranked. He, he made a lot of money. I got a phone call for Austin to do the same thing. I said, okay, you're going to pay me this much. I told Jose he's got to pay me. So pay, they pay me a commission fee. It's just a commission fee. It's not. It's not a franchise fee. It's not an advertising fee. It's nothing like that. So it's just a one-time <laughs> fee. <coughs> Every month for the rest of your life. I pay for the uh, hosting. I pay for the website, which is free. But I pay for the phone numbers, which is like $135 a month for like 20 phone numbers all together. It's like really honestly, it's like 130 bucks a month. Um, and then we opened Junk Eye San Antonio, uh, uh, San Jose. Uh, uh, Sacramento, 
Washington, D.C. Um, Shit. The Phoenix, I had Phoenix for a while. They went defunct. Uh, San Jose went defunct, too. Um, you know, some people think they can do it themselves. Help yourself. Uh, once you lose the website, you lose my phone number, it's over. It's over, man. Because I own it. I'll own the website and I'll own the phone number. So imagine this. Matt, I take away your phone from you. And I take away your phone from you, Jojo. How much business are you going to get? Zero. So I take, I give them a phone number to use in the Houston, Austin area. I control that. And then I build this powerful website. And then you pay me uh, an amount every month. And I'm going to tell you, when you pay me, it doesn't make a dent on my, my income at all. I use that money to like put gas for like a week. It's nothing big, but I want these companies to succeed. I want them to survive because of the franchise 1-800 junk ad. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, I opened them up and I helped them out. Uh, I They call me for advice all the time. I was talking to San Antonio last week about Google My Business and stuff. So they're, they call me every once in a while. We talk. We talk and I invite them over uh, once a year with a little SEO, uh, you know, to establish ways to grow the business. Um, and they just pay. They just pay every month and, and that's it. Really. It's actually so it's a win-win situation pretty much for both for them and for you. Definitely. And, and I think anybody can do that. Again, lack of work, people being lazy, man. I don't know. You know, it's me wanting to build the brand. And I think we have a great brand. I, I had a guy call me from Alaska and said he wanted to start Junk Guys Alaska. And I'm like, talk to your wife. Tell her what I'm going to do for you. Call me back. And he's been bugging me the last few days. So somebody, um, I can't find the question right now, but somebody was like, who is taller, Ricardo or Matt? Oh, Matt's taller than me. I see Matt. And I got Matt, I was like, shit, didn't I tell you, dude, you're tall. Yeah, yeah I'm he's a, tall. I'm six, three and a half. No, I'm six, one on a good day. So what's the biggest mistake that you see new junk removal companies make besides spending a bunch of money on stuff that uh -huh. they don't need, like maybe a financing a brand new truck and they ain't got the business yet. What's another big mistake you see guys do? Um, <laughs> not, but I mean, there's three, there's three main, main mistakes, man. Three main mistakes. You, you want to get into business and you have this illusion. It's like you, you think you're David Copperfield and you go to Matt and Jojo's videos and then you're like, oh, oh, look at this guy in Dallas. Junk guys, he makes it so easy. And then all of a sudden, the smoke comes through the ground, the illusion of the elephant and the curtain in the back. And then you start jumping when you start realizing, oh man, these guys do it easy. It's a hard business. Yeah. So that illusion that the business is easy, it's not. How are you going to get business? And then you get into the stuff. You buy a new truck, you're screwed. You buy a trailer, you finance them both. With the insurance on the truck, you're at like two thousand dollars. Trust me, you're at two grand already um, a month, and then you, you're paying for leads. Why? Again, you go back to the part that you you're you're just not a good worker. You don't want to put the hours into it um, and build a great website and do the work yourself. Now, I don't think a lot of people know how much work we put in and how much work you put in doing jobs, videoing our day, <laughs> editing the videos. Feeding our website, Google My Business, posting every single day, making content, trying to figure out what videos we're going to do, and then editing it and throwing it up. It's like it's a lot of work. It's huh. I get this quite Matt. I get this question all the time, all the time, all the time. How do you do it? Is that yeah, yeah. How, how do you do it? How do you film every day and do nine or ten jobs every day? And I'm like, I do it. Because the sun is going to come up the next morning like it does every day. It's a normal thing for me to video my daily work. It's normal for me. And sometimes I get lazy where I'll just clip the camera and just start doing the work and I'll talk in the background. And I can do that too. Um, I mean, not the best videos in the world, but it, they're they're good videos. Um, and, you know, the cool thing about it, Matt, is, is that – and I think this is something y'all should do is – Get all the California companies, as many as y'all can together. That's up to y'all. But what I did was 
I decided to unite all the companies locally in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. We all work together. We all work together and we get ideas. Uh, there's so much information all the time. Um, people are passing jobs to each other. I have three guys that I work with on, on most, most of my jobs and it's MJD hauling. It's my boy up here in North Texas. It's, uh, um, Anthony. And I just pick up the phone and they're willing to Jose. He's willing to help me out. So these companies, they, they, they help me out. Cause I pay good too. I do pay, but you know, money is always going to help out a lot too. You know, we have, we have Chris from clutter reduction that says, um, a question for Richard. <coughs> what does he think is his biggest regret or mistake during the startup, your first couple of years? And what did you learn from it? And um, what changed since? Well, clutter reduction, uh, great question. And this was easy. The, the best answer of the night so far. It, I mean, the best question that anybody's asked me. My biggest regret is... Um, about, uh, I guess, seven years ago, I had five trucks and three full-time employees. And we were making, and this is not a lie, we were making about three, $3,000 to $3,500 every day, $2,000, $35, $3,000, $2,500 dollars every day, every day, every day. And um, every day there was a problem. Uh, truck breaking down, employee speeding, uh, employee wrecking a truck, uh, bad service, um, just anything, you name it, it was there. It was there. And then uh, I, we would do this. And then I was making, uh, I don't know. I remember one year I was like at one, $1.2 million in revenue. And then I go to my bank account and I have like a thousand dollars in it. That's the reality of junk removal. That's the reality. It's because there's no money when you're paying 40% to your employees and another 20% because they're messing everything up, running these 7.3 diesel trucks with no oil in them, no filters in them. And they're making all these mistakes and you're losing customers up and down. I think the biggest mistake I ever did was hire full-time employees to my business. This is a business that can be done husband and wife. It can be done by myself. And I proved it in my videos. I proved it. I do it every single day and I've been successful for the last 15 years. Employees do not care about your business like you will care about your baby. You know what I mean? They they just don't. No, um, you're 100 correct on that. You, you know, here's another thing, Jojo. I want I want you to think about this. Um, if, if let's just hypothetically a uh, million dollars, 1.2 million dollars in a year in, in revenue, and then you go to your bank, you got a million, uh, you got uh, ten thousand dollars. Let's just say ten thousand. It's just not worth it. But then you make $300,000 in revenue and then you look at your bank account and you got $80,000. You don't have to sell that much. There is this perception that revenue is so important. It's not. It's expenses that's so important. It's, it's what you're le it left with when, <laughs> when all is said and done. Yeah. Revenue is a joke. Expenses is so important. Cut down your expenses and the money will come. I, I have learned also, Matt, um, that as your business matures, your money matures. You'll actually make more money long term. It, it's weird. And I learned that in the last four years where I've actually made a lot more money than I did the first 10 years of my business combined. It's crazy, man. I don't know what it is. And my SEO was the same. It's crazy that you say that. I've seen a guy post on Facebook about it. I saw him. making like three hundred eighty thousand dollars. He's killing it, and, and something happened where he had to go to the hospital. Yeah. And the guy was just like preaching great information, letting you know, hey, I had three full time employees. I had to let them go. One of my trucks went down, and I only had so much money in the bank now, and he could barely make ends meet after making over almost four hundred thousand dollars or three hundred eighty thousand dollars for the year. So yeah. anything, anything can happen. Oh yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I've been injured. I have been injured where I was out for two weeks. I loved it. I sat at home. I gained about six pounds. I loved it. I was subcontracting jobs, but I have been hurt. And it, it's 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 hard to see people taking my jobs, but um, I made a little money off them and not much. I guess in like the two weeks I was out, I probably made like 400 bucks but or, or $300. 
and I do that in one job and it's, it's just weird. <coughs> um, but overall, again, it just, it just comes to how much work you want to put into it. So clutter, clutter reduction says, Hey, I'm solo as well. Hire help here. And they're looking for to looking to bring my girlfriend on with me one day. She makes uh, too much at the moment to step down at a level though. LOL. Thanks for the answer. Uh, clutter reduction. I'll tell you this much. Why do you need your girlfriend? Do it yourself, brother. Build this business for yourself. It's cool that you want to bring your girlfriend in it. It's really great. She might love this business. But brother, this is your business. Do it yourself. This is a business that can easily be built by one person. I proved it. Look at the last four years of my videos. I proved it that this is a business that can be done. And you can be very successful in this business. You can easily talk to any person that works with me. I share jobs that are at 15,000, 10,000, 7,000. I share them with my, my competitors all the time. And I make a lot of money off those. Trust me, I make money off those jobs. And I'm still feeding them money. Still. So um, that leads me to my next question. Because, because you do most of the work yourself. Um, <laughs> Um, give us some tips. What um, what do you do when you show up to a job and you're like, ooh, little bigger than I thought, but how do you make it work? Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've got tips. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I got a lot of stories like that. So when I show up to a job site, I usually know what it is. Um, I will do the estimate first. I always do estimate or I'll send somewhere to go and do an estimate. So let's say um, it's a warehouse clean out, which we, we've done recently. It, I go do the warehouse clean out. I tell them, hey, I got to go do the estimate. So I drive in my Jeep. Um, I look at it. I realize that it's a $10,000. Let's just, let's just pretend it's a $10,000 job. I immediately say, yes, I can do it tomorrow. No problem. They say, okay, no problem. I'll see you at 10. Then I get on the chat and I said, who's willing to make $1,000 tomorrow? I'm paying for two truckloads and I bargain with everybody. I'll bargain with everybody. Uh, I, I know the size of their trailers because they've helped me out before. Uh, and I'll pay everybody different. I'll pay Jose 500 for his trailer where I'll pay Jamon 400 for his trailer. And then I ask him to pull twice. And by that time, the job is done. You know what I mean? Uh, and then they'll all show up. And of course, it's better to work with junk removal companies than just people you pick up at Home Depot because junk removal companies, they know how to haul stuff off. We know how to load stuff and do all these little things. So uh, I, I definitely uh, will do that. You know, I, I definitely get those jobs that I know I can do or I can't do. Like a hot tub, I can do it by myself, but I don't want to do it by myself. I, I asked Jamon, uh, I think last week we did four, three hot tubs last week, and he was there at every one of them. I gave him 100 bucks. I only make $200, you know what I mean? But I dump it with a trailer that has six of them on there. I don't dump it with one trailer. <laughs> no way, dude. I got to load down the truck with two and then put four in the back of my trailer and then we'll dump them, you know, at the end of the week, of course. Yes. So, so um, we do have a question that says, do you recommend liability insurance when starting? And have you ever damaged something while removing junk? Great question. Uh, okay. So you have, a, you have to have insurance on your truck. Okay. In Texas, you have to. Uh, do I recommend liability insurance? No. No, don't don't get that. That's so overrated. If you're a complete and excuse my language, if you're a complete idiot and you walk bow legged, I guess, and you're blind from one eye. Now, this is a combination of things you have to have. You have to be blind from one eye, uh, walk with a bad limp or be bow legged and you have to be a complete idiot in the head. Then I would recommend getting liability insurance uh, because you might be dumb enough to hit a piano on the store, I guess. I had one. One time I, I have damaged something and I just paid cash. It was like uh, close to $3,000. Uh, I damaged it pretty good, actually. But usually customers will understand. They understand. If I clip something, I'm like, ma'am, I actually hit this. They go, oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. They know that, you know, you're a small business. They know they're not going to crucify. Now, again, again, I want to say this, Matt and JoJo. In Texas, we close a deal with a shake, with a handshake. That's a $5,000 handshake. I don't know how it works, but I'm guaranteeing that in New York, you can't shake a hand for a $5,000 contract. In Texas, we do it for $10,000, $20,000. We can do that. And we're, we know we're going to get paid. Uh, so people in Texas know that if you damage the corner of their table, it's cool, man. 
hey, don't worry, you're a small business. So, uh, but I definitely don't recommend uh, liability insurance. You won't, ra you rarely use it. I've used mine uh, never, of course, I've never used mine. Uh, I just paid out of my pocket, if, if anything. And it, the biggest one was $3,500. And, um, and we actually do have the general liability insurance, but we actually have um, some of our like bigger vendor, like we're, we, our bigger jobs will often want us to show proof that we are insured. So, um, and we use next insurance and it really is very, but like 40 bucks a month. Really cheap, right? Yeah. Super pretty cheap. cheap. Pretty cheap. Pretty good. What's your best fine year of found in the trash business? Uh, $11,500 cash. Oh, wow. Where was That's that? That's a at? great find. Uh, it was at a hoarder house that I charged $3,000. And then I turned around and used that money to buy that house. Oh, wow. So and where then, was the cash hidden at? Uh, it was, it was, it's, it's a great story. I should do a video about it, but just to say it really fast. Um, the trash was about this high. You're walking and your foot was just get disappearing in trash. And we're talking about trash, not hoarder trash. This was like paper. And as I'm throwing the stuff in the bins that I'm bringing, and I had like a, four companies working for me, I'm just throwing it in the bins of the, the, the trash can. I know it, it was the weirdest thing. You know, when, you know, you feel like, for instance, you feel money and you know how money is, right? Money is like, you can feel it's money. And I felt that it was money in an envelope. I could feel it and it was stacked. It was like a lot more than I'm holding, but it was just thick. It was like thick. And I felt it in the envelope and I tossed it in the trash, not thinking twice. And I'm building trash and I say to myself, Hold on, that felt weird. So I go back and I dig through it and I pull out the envelope, I touch it again. And I'm like, I opened it, all hundreds. It was uh, $3,000. I almost dumped that. <laughs> I, it was $3,000. The story gets really good because it was $3,000. And then I look at the floor and I tell all the employees, do not come up here. This is my bedroom. Do not bother me. I'm going to take care of this. I start looking all on the floor. I found $7,000 in that room. And then I looked out the window and I noticed my dumpsters are all full of trash. I got to look through each one of those. So I go to the landfill with two trucks. We dump. That's when I had dumpsters and I dump them all on the ground and you can't look through it in the dump. You can't do that. You know, it's, it's illegal in, in Texas. You can't do that. You can't look through the trash. And I pulled out a hundred dollar bill. And when that big old truck came by, I held it out. And I said, I'll be here a couple of hours. <laughs> grabs it. And he goes, take all the time. I was there about four hours That's great. opening every bag. And I found the rest of the money, which was $4,200. So that was a damn good day. Brother, I couldn't tell you, man. It, it's, it really dump started my business a lot. It really, it led to my property that I have, uh, you know, the headquarters. It, it led to selling the property that I had and then using that money for the headquarters. And just really, it, it was a big part of my business. Yeah. So you got a, you got a, a property where you keep all your vehicles at? Yeah. Is that right? Or is that your house? Yeah, no, no. It used to be my house until I met my wife. You hear that, honey? Okay. Um, and so I used to live there on my property. Uh, it was, it's about, about 1100 square feet or smaller, somewhere like that. I fixed it out. It used to be like a check cashing place. It's a commercial building. And then I, I, I put flooring, painted it, put a studio, you know, YouTube studio, and then fixed it up really nice. Two bedrooms, kitchen, made my own kitchen, built everything there. And then I had my warehouse in the back. I was very profitable because I kept everything on my property. And I was only paying one fee. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I loved it. I, I wasn't uh, tied down. I didn't have a, you know, a, a, a girl with me at the time. I kept it for like two years. Um, and then I found my wife. We got married. I, I bought a house in Fort Worth. And I still have my property in Dallas. Yes. Okay. So we have Heidi that says, can you walk me through payments? So um, you can answer how you take payment. You take payment. Do you ever take payment before a job? You take it after the job. And then, then we'll explain how we do ours. Okay, cool. Uh, so I always take payment after the job. I don't like people ever, ever do I allow someone to pay me before I complete the job. I don't do that. I, I never have done that before. Uh, I do not ask for a deposit because that's just not going to work out. 
you're going to lose a job if you look as for a deposit. Um, I complete the job for four hundred dollars, and the best part about it is that I make a joke out of you owing me money. I always do that with my customers, and I do it in my videos all the time. But I'll go up to the customer and I'll go like this. I'll go pay up time, you know, and they laugh. They think it's the funniest thing. Or I'm after I'm done with the job, I'm saying, my, you know what, my my pockets are feeling a little light here, you know, like four hundred dollars light, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna go get your money for you, and then they, you know, it's a funny joke that I do with them. Um, and then I accept uh, Venmo, Cash App, Zelle, uh, PayPal, uh, check. I take a lot of checks. Um, yeah. So that's how I do it. But most of the time, uh, and, and this is, I think, Matt and JoJo, I think y'all can relate to something like this. But um, from day one, I've never been embarrassed to tell a job a price. Never. And especially take money. I love it. It's like it gives me a rush or something like that. But I love telling them people that you owe me two thousand dollars or a thousand bucks or fifty bucks. I love that part. It's like the best part of, of, of the job is going, OK, forty five bucks. You know, I put my hand on the, the forty five bucks or the check or whatever. That's the best part. I worked with a lot of people that have issues like that, that are embarrassed to ask for money, that are embarrassed to give pricing. Oh, I couldn't tell you horror stories about how many companies I've worked with and they just don't know how to do that. It's yeah, you have to know what you're worth and you have to you have to believe that the service you give is valuable and uh -huh. worth something and you have a price tag on it and that's your price. And, you know, and you just you 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 give your estimate, you know what it's you know what it's going to cost to get rid of the stuff. And, you know, you just you have to know what you're worth and charge accordingly and be proud of it. And yeah. I had. Uh -huh. How's our crowd doing? How are we doing on this crowd? Do we got a lot we of got 113 people in the building right now? Make sure all you viewers out there go check out Ricardo's channel, Junk Guys DFW. You can find them on YouTube. Make sure you go subscribe there. Yeah, and if this is giving you value at all, please hit the like. And if you haven't yet, subscribe because we always have a wealth of knowledge about not just junk removal, but any business that you want to start. Just you know, get out there and make it happen. And oh. I don't know if this person um, was late joining us, but he says the best way to advertise for a newbie with limited cash and pretty much what the video was mostly about, SEO. Yeah. All the three platforms, being on them, always uploading content and oh. posting <coughs> and, um, and just making yourself relevant out there in social media where potential customers can find you. Uh, free uh, free internet listings is something, well, it's called free for a reason because it's free, but uh, putting your information on free internet listings is really important. Like uh, brownbook.com, greensheet.com, yellowpages.com, verizonpages.com, Yelp. Uh, I, 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 all my information is on all those. Uh, that's free. Uh, that helps with, with SEO. Uh, it's something that I use back in the day and, you know, I've looked into it and it's still really po uh, decently popular. Um, but just that's something. And, and then building a really cheap ass website, like my website, my websites might look, oh, like I'm, I, someone threw up information on them. Cause they do look like that. I know they look like that, but they're rich in content and Google happens to like them for some reason. And, uh, we have, um, Someone that says the best live, a lot of really good content. Thanks, guys. So really glad you, you know, you throw a question up um, if you have one really. Well, good. Okay, Yeah, if you, you have any questions for me, uh, you're welcome to. If you got any questions for Matt and Jojo, you're welcome to answer. We're, we're, we're answering some of these questions. So uh, just a, a key. Here's a little key. Uh, so I went to Junk Con 2022 and then I went into uh, to see these two people that were talking in JunkCon 22. And they mentioned that uh, that they're doing YouTube shorts a lot. They've been starting to do YouTube shorts. And that, of course, was Matt and JoJo. So then I went home and I started doing YouTube shorts. And they actually work really good. My YouTube shorts are really, really popular. Uh, I'm getting like 4,000 or 7,000 views and 3,000 views. And my videos only get like 300 or 400 um, of videos. but uh, YouTube shorts is pretty, is pretty cool. Um, so, but thank you, by the way, I took something from y'all. There you go. Yeah. Um, something that's super cool with the shorts too, is it goes in front of new people. 
Yeah. So then you'll get a bunch of new subscribers coming on there, which is great. Yeah. Well, I did some research about YouTube Shorts. I did look into it, Matt, and it says that Google's trying to push that format so hard out there. So they're ranking them really high and they're really popular for SEO. And it works for me. So I just put them out there. Uh, uh, okay, so here, here's a little nugget really fast, guys. Wacky junk removal. Man, what are y'all doing here, man? Man. So anyway, they're, they're really great people, man. I love those people. They're fun. Yeah. So here's here's something. Uh, I had a video, and this is true. This happened two weeks ago. I had a video on TikTok. I don't do a lot of TikToks, but then I started doing TikTok. And it went to a million overnight. My son texts me the next morning. I wake up. I look at my phone. It's at a million. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've gone viral. Well, I decided to take advantage of the viralness. But then I started noticing things across all my platforms. See, that video, and this is SEO for you. This is how SEO works. That video is at 4 million right now. It's got 4 million views. But as that video is growing past the 200,000 mark to 300,000 mark to 400,000 mark to a million, it's at 1.2 million. I decide to catch it around a million, and I start putting that video on my content, which is social media. I start sharing it everywhere, and I tell people, hey, it's popular. On my TikTok, it says junkguysdfw.net. That's what it says on my TikTok. If you click that video and you're kind of nosy and you just want to be nosy and you say, oh, I want to see this guy's website. And then you go to junkguysdfw.net. You're going to get this barrage of videos of YouTube all in thrown in your face because there's 10 videos of piano removal 10 videos of hot, whatever. You're just going to see this. Automatically, that week that that video went viral, I got a Google Analytics email, and I never read them from Google. And it says that I had 110,000 people go to my website, Junk Guys DM. Great. <laughs> Crazy? Okay. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So in the last 15 years that I've had my website, I probably had about 30,000 people go to my website. And now I have... A hundred thousand in one week. That's my like YouTube videos were getting were were not they weren't soaring, but I noticed that there was an abnormality. I usually, I post a video, it goes to a hundred quick, two hundred, but now they're going from two to four. They were doubling really quick, and it slowed down now. But those week of that videos, I mean, yeah, it soared. So that's what SEO did for you right there. That person and Google knows this. Trust me, Jojo, Google knows when you're on TikTok and then you click and it goes to Facebook and then you click and it goes from Facebook to YouTube and then you go and scroll and you click a video and you're back at YouTube. That connection is SEO, 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 SEO back. All that counts. So I don't have to do any SEO for about a year and a half or two years. <laughs> And, and that's the great thing about YouTube, too. I've noticed when we put our website in there all the time and then there's people, like you said, that are nosy. They go on there. They click on our website. You'd be surprised how many junk callers call us up, then hang up because they're on our website checking it out. And they hung up real quick yeah. and I call them back and they're like, oh, I didn't mean to. Uh, I was checking your website out. So oh, that's cool. I want to just take a quick second to thank Black Sales Hauling uh for uh, doing a super chat. We really, really appreciate that. And they said um, one of the most valuable lessons we learned from Sonoma is that not every job is for you. So don't be afraid to walk away. And uh, thank you once again for that. And we actually did have some questions come on. And Parker uh, it has a you know yard sign effective and stuff. And all I want to do is if you missed last week's motivational monday you should uh, go back and watch it because we actually had a person from uz marketing on and he was talking about the effectiveness of signs and what colors you should do and what you should put on your signs and where you should place them so i just suggest that you go and watch that video because it's all about signs so something we gotta do we gotta step our TikTok game up so I got a question for you, Ricardo. How much business do you get off TikTok? I see a lot of junk haulers on TikTok. I don't. You don't get none? Nah. It's that's like that's like with Instagram too. We don't get much business off Instagram, but we post it all the time. Yeah. Brother, I'm telling you, there's people out there that make their business off of Instagram. That's like 
their whole business is Instagram. And I always tell them, how? How are you making a dollar off Instagram? I, I don't under, I, Facebook once a month. I'll get a call from Facebook once a month. I saw you on Facebook. They'll tell me. I really don't ever ask because I don't really care where you found me as long as I'm making money, I guess. I'm not trying to be a jerk, but that's what the business is for, to make money. But yeah, I, Facebook maybe once a month. Uh, my website every day. Uh, YouTube almost every day, I guess. Um, I, these social media sites, they don't really bring me that much business. It's the multiple, multiple of social media sites that I have. I mean, some lady said... Uh, Jojo, get this. You're going to love this one. Some lady said that she saw me off Twitter. I said, yeah, I saw that you charge $300 for a hot tub removal. She, Look, I, I took a picture with my phone. That way, if you change the price, I could tell you. I look at it. It was a Twitter post from 2017. Oh, oh wow. wow. I was like, what? That's crazy. Right. So, there's the magic of SEO for you. You know, there's the magic of SEO for you right, right there. So we do have a question. It says, um, Texas premier hauling and junk removal says, um, where do you find the most success from an advertising standpoint across your social media platforms? Yours would be Facebook. Yeah. Out here in California, Facebook works great for us. Mm -hmm. so. I, I, would, I would suppose that if it was going to be something like that, it'd be probably like, um, uh, um, uh, Craigslist. Crazy. Uh, I mean, they're not really a social media site, but you got to pay for it. I would pay. I would honestly pay right now as, as I am. I think uh, I would post uh, maybe five, uh, six times a day. Uh, if I if I was going to do it, I would post six times a day, which is how much money is six times five is 30 bucks. So I would put 30. Well, I'd find a round number like 25 because um, 25 cents, of course. Uh, so you put $25 every day and I'd spend about $100 a week or $150 a week, and that would be fine. But that $150 would easily pay off. Easily, easily would pay off. One job would pay that off. Uh, and I think you would average about maybe in a whole week starting out, I think maybe five or six jobs a week. Uh, if you did it, only if you did it. And if I did it, I know I would get job. So I got a question for you. Let's say you wake up in the morning, you have no jobs on the schedule, and you want to get some business. What would you do? I work on my website. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't post on Craigslist. I wouldn't do social. I, I would post my website on social media. I would post videos. I would edit a video. Uh, well, so we did. As a matter of fact, guys, I want to tell everybody. Uh, about two weeks ago, it iced over in Texas. It iced over in Texas, and I could not work. I did not work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Did not work four days straight. So I was home all day. And if you look at that week, you'll notice how many videos I put out. And how much social media postings? I mean, in one day, I put like 40 things out in one day. And that's sharing it across all the platforms. And the next day, I did the same thing. Uh, I did to TikTok. And I think that's when the video went viral, by the way. That's when the video went viral. Um, and it worked. You, oh, that, there you go, Matt. There you go. Uh, what do I do on my day off? I, I post. I, I, I did social media. And that video, that video, that TikTok video, I put it out during the snowstorm two, three weeks ago. And it went viral. And it paid off for me. That paid off for me. So there's proof right there that it works. I didn't even think about that. You know. So it was it what illegal dumping a mattress in a dumpster? Is that what it was called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was illegal dumping in a dumpster. Mattress. Yeah, yeah. And that mattress, you know, in the video, I lie. I, I think I got that mattress down the street, and then I threw it in there, and then whatever. You know, same hey, stuff. They got they got the views and went viral. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. Um, we have a mic that's asking, would you suggest getting a 1-800 number? No, never. Um, my internet went out. Uh, I'm glad that I have it back. It hasn't been working for two days. That's why I didn't put out any videos in two days. Um, what's up, Sergio? Joke Solutions DFW, by the way. I'm sorry, uh, Jojo. 1-800 um, number. I picked up the phone and I called Spectrum and I told them my thing wasn't working and their number is 1-800 um, blah 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 and I was just regretting that number just seeing that one and then the eight number the eight and the zero zero is a is a flag for me but I'll tell you what's not a flag when I see the 214 number that 214 512 it's a local company you know it's local I know someone's gonna answer the phone 
uh, I, I feel comfortable with that local number. It's a huge error. It's a huge error to get in. And I think you would agree on that, don't you think? Or, or Yeah, we use our personal phone. It's, it's, I do too. Yeah, keep it all local. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Uh, so here's a horror story. Horror story. This happened to me uh, last week of uh, Matt and JoJo. That you're going to love this one. And I did a video about it. And I posted it like five or six times. Can you believe that? Um, I, I got a booking last week for Colorado Springs. I was going to remove a uh, satellite dish. It was 150 bucks. And I don't, I don't go. I'm not in Colorado. That's the problem. I, I don't have junk ice Colorado Springs or Colorado. So it doesn't matter. So I decide to pick up the phone. I look at the zip code on my booking form. I say junk removal service zip code, right? And I'm going to hand the job to somebody. Call the first person, answer. Let me, let me guess. No one answered. First person didn't answer. Answer the machine. Second person, the phone rang six times. I hung up. Third person, another answering machine. Fourth person, it rang and then it went dead. Fifth person, it rang. And then another answer machine made by, made by Workies, which was really weird. It says Workies on the end of it. And then the sixth one, Joe and Cynthia, Joe and Cynthia picked up the phone. They own uh, a junk removal car company, which I totally forgot. And I apologize, Joe, if y'all are listening, I apologize. Um, their name of the company was Syntex. Oh, dude, I, I don't, I take that back. They answered the phone. I gave him the job, and then this is what happened. I had two companies call me because they saw me on the caller ID, and they called me back. And when I'm talking to him, I, well, I said, Joe, here's the job. It's yours. He said, no problem, Ricardo. I'll let you know when it's done. He said, don't worry about it. Just blah, 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 whatever. Then I called back. The companies were on, you know, on the other line, so I click over. I met a good guy. He knew who I was. I gave him advice. He had he, his margins, get this, Jojo, Matt, his margins, three trucks, six employees, uh, made $750,000. His margins are 7%. He has about $2,500 in the bank. Put it that way. Yeah, Dang, was, I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. I'll be stressed the hell out. Whoo, bro, I'm telling you, brother. God, Lee, that's like, whoo. I, I can't, I don't live like that. I can't live like that. You know what I mean? Like, it's just weird. Uh, but the other guy called me back, another company called Junkin Hall. He called me back. We talked for a little while, too. He's a one-man job. He, he just started out. I said, you should answer your phone. I gave this guy 150 bucks. And so can you imagine that in this day and age, all the – and I think, JoJo, you said this a while ago. In this day and age, you just type in Google, junk removal service. Our videos show up. You click in YouTube. There's so many companies. It's not about that. It's about the – effing effort that you put in to pick up the damn phone and get 150 bucks. But there were six companies that decided not to do it. Yeah. It's one of the things when somebody says, what's your biggest advice when starting this? And I'll be answer your phone. Dude, what the hell? It's simple as answering your phone. Yeah. Answer your phone and try to get to the job as soon as possible. Soon because as possible. if you don't, you put it on the calendar, like for five or six days, a lot of times they're going to cancel on, they're going to find someone else pretty much. Andrew Thompson. What's up, Junk Jedi? I think it's Junk Jedi. He's a really yeah. great. Yeah, he's a great guy. Yeah, Junk yeah. Room Solutions, great video guys. Both of y'all have great advice. I use both of y'all's advice. I came out uh, ahead. Awesome. What's up, Sergio? Uh, thanks for the deuce. Both of y'all are sharing. Deuce is wacky. What's up, man? So, uh, Ricardo, what's the biggest job you ever tackled? $58,000. It took me almost – I record it every day. <laughs> I, I showed it off because – I was younger, of course, and I want to show off how much money you're making. Uh, 58000 It took me 30 days. That's a big-ass job. Really? And where did that job come from? It was a printing company that went bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah, it went bankrupt. Uh, the owners were filthy rich. Um, and this relates back to my property. They owned my property. They owned it. And... They told me they have other properties where you go clean this place out, this dump up in uh, in Dallas, downtown. And I went down there, cleaned it up. I paid, I charged them $10,000. And I asked them what they were going to do with the property. They said they were going to sell it. I said, how about this? I got $30,000 in the bank. How about I give you that money? You owe me $58,000. You can pay me that in payments. I'll use that for you know the payments of this place. Uh, and it worked out. It worked out. It worked out really good for me. 
And then, um, so what is your five-year goals? What goals do you, where do you see yourself in five years? What's your plan? You know, um, so we just got a new house. We haven't, we're still in this older house that I'm in right now. Um, I think me and my wife, we're going to build a house. Uh, it's going to, it's going to relate back to the business, of course. Um, <clears throat> I don't think, you know, I, Matt, Jojo, I don't think I'm going to be a millionaire in the next five years anyway. Um, I think I'm going to live really good, really good. I doubt it that a lot of my friends here are going to be millionaires. I really doubt that. Um, save money, uh, build a, a, a nice house uh, in, in a farm, you know, uh, land, move out of this place, go move into the house that we just got. Um Sell that one, move into another, the, the, the dream house, uh, have my business established what it is right now. Uh, keep on going to work every day. I don't think I'm going to grow my business anymore. If someone wants to commission and do the commissions and look at like Junk Guys Alaska, <laughs> I'm telling you, Matt, someone called me for Junk Guys Alaska. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's pretty crazy for sure. I know. And they had just had a UFO the other day. So I can't have UFOs, you know, landing on one of my trucks in, in Alaska. My wife came in laughing at me. Um, but just, just maybe open a few more, I guess, if, if I really, if people want to, if they want to believe in the brand, keep my YouTube channel, keep on doing that stuff. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't think it's about growing my business anymore. I, I don't think I can get any bigger. I have too many trucks. I have too many, way too many trailers. Um, I think I need to get rid of some of my trucks. So I have five trucks. I only drive three of them. One is back in the warehouse. It's just sitting there rotting away. You know, I think you know when you don't drive trucks, what happens to them, Matt? They get rusty. They just yeah, if you're not if you're not they get beat up pretty much. And I got one, I got two trucks right now getting beat up in the sun and the motor's getting every month that I just don't drive it. And it's just it's not a lack that I'm lazy. It's just the lack that I don't need it right now. And that's the worst thing, having them just sitting there not running around. Yeah, but I don't want to sell them because they run good. And they're if my other truck blows up any day, I just go and run it to the shop, fix it, oil it, you know, and I'm ready to go. You know what I mean? I'm ready to run another truck. So, um, yeah, so, and I have diesels. All of them are diesels. Um, uh, I don't know. I have like 10 trailers, 10 or 9 trailers on the property. So how many uh, trucks and trailers do you have? I have, the last time I counted was 12 trailers, five trucks. I'm down to three working trucks that I use every day. And then one trailer that I use every day. And then all the other trailers are just lined up on the property. That's it. And now, I have, Do you have, still have those dump uh, dumpster trailers? No, no, the dumpster trailers I'm done with. I sold both of them. I, I sold them so cheap, brother. Oh my God. I sold one for seven thousand and the other one for seventy five hundred. It was, and I'm going to tell everybody here, and nobody ever likes this, but uh, dumpster trailers weigh a lot. It's a lot of wear and tear on your trucks if you don't have a strong truck. Uh, I went through a multiple trucks with my trailers. Long term, I knew that they were going to damage more trucks, so I just got rid of them. I just got rid of them. They weren't holding that much trash either. They weren't holding that much. I think they were like. 16 yards of trash and i just saw a waste of time driving that big old rig down the road and, you know it was a roll-offs so i had 12 roll-offs you know and i just said Screw it. one day i just parked them they ended up getting flat like in six months all of them were flat and i said i gotta sell them i gotta sell them they're gonna they're gonna go bad so i sold them all yeah we had somebody ask uh, jojo is this the biggest live based on the numbers and I mean, we, we do, we often have large lives um, and I don't know if it's like the largest numbers, but it's absolutely the longest. So we've had over a hundred people for a very long time. Did you have hundred for a hundred people? I want to know. Um, what the most we've ever had maybe is like 140, 150. How many did we have? We, we had over like 107, 110. That's not bad at 100, all. 114, 100, but and it's still at 100, and it's been like that for over an hour. So, so people so, are loving the video. Yeah. I'm so disappointed, guys. Tell your friends to get on. We got to get 142. <laughs> 141. 
Listen, the, crazy, the crazy thing is, I go, I gotta go to the bathroom again real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> so listen, I, I will tell you for whoever's listening, Andrew Thompson, Hernario, Dan Brazos, go turn on another computer in the house. Let's push that number over 140. Let's get to 141. Let's break the record that Holland and Bolling, Sonoma Holling has, guys. Come on, guys. Get with it. Stay in the game. If you're not going to listen to us, you know what I'm going to tell you all to do? Keep the computer on so we keep the numbers up, guys. Okay? So yeah. let's get this going. Let's break a record tonight. You can say that you're a part of something. Listen, JoJo and Matt have helped us out the last few years. They've helped so many people. She's kind. She's got a nice voice. He's a hard worker. He seems like he's he's the one that goes and does all the big, tough jobs. And then they turn around, they record these videos, they post these videos so everybody can see them. You got that. You get advice from you save money. You're able to feed your kids, okay? Like their advice, you're able to feed your kids with one small idea that you steal from them or you borrow from them. You're able to do that. I give advice daily. And so many people I know take my ideas and do something with them. I've helped you build your business, helped you build your, your lifestyle, helped you. Come on, guys. If you cannot put that number over 140, you've got to help us out this time. You know what I'm saying? Well, definitely. So Junk Solutions, look what he did. Look what he did. He's on his phone. That's one yeah. hit. And then he's on his computer. I love you, Sergio, my boy. I want everybody to do that. So let's push this number higher. Let's get it number higher, guys. Ask me some questions. I'll be glad to answer any of these questions. Okay, look at Bama Holling, what they did. They signed into another account under their Google. I love so, that. Hey, something we should do next time is have about four or five different junk haulers on a live video. Maybe get me, you, we'll get Andrew Thompson on here and a couple other guys. And we'll just answer a bunch of questions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will definitely say this. Um, we've It's the largest numbers for the longest amount of time. Oh, that's sure. awesome, guys. Awesome. Yeah. You know, um, go ahead. Let me let me grab the uh, laptop charger real quick. It's about to die. So yeah, hold on, hold up real quick. Here. We don't. You know, I'm gonna push this number. I got three phones here. I'm gonna push this number a little higher. I'm we gonna... don't um, typically uh, go live for this long. So it's a very. Oh, oh no, I, I love I love talking. I love talking and stuff. So I'm asking everybody to keep on pushing the number higher. Stay on it. Everybody, okay. So I'm here now. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm on it here on this phone. Honey, turn your phone on to the live video, <laughs> and you're gonna get two hits right here. We're gonna push this number higher. Everybody, come on, guys. I want Cisco everybody. Garcia says closing, he is. Um, we can do this really good. New phones too. And if it don't happen this time, we're gonna do it next time for sure. So we got 99 people in here. Been off for an hour and a half. This is like a real episode right here. <laughs> this is a junk removal episode. This is better than Netflix. <laughs> so every okay. So Andrew Thompson has two. We got. We're at 99 right now. We gotta push it higher, guys. Oh, Come give on. Give my phone, Jojo. Give my so, phone. Well, we can phone. answer a question really quick. Yeah, um, definitely. Can... Ask me. So um, some somebody asked, um, uh, um, with the recession, who do you think that would affect? The smaller junk removal or uh, the larger the larger junk removal um, <laughs> companies? An another great question. Hernario Rudia, uh, great question, man. Um, okay, so the recession. So when I started Junk, uh, junk Eyes uh, DFW, uh, you have to realize that there was these two buildings in New York that got bombed by a terrorist, okay? And when they're, they're sitting there getting bombed, I'm thinking the economy starts tanking. Uh, of course, the stock market was closed for about a whole week, which was the first time ever since the Great Depression. Um, the, the prices of food, the prices, the economic failure of, of just land and... Um, uh, housing and uh, automobiles, which are the biggest ones in the United States, they start slumping. And we go into this uh, slight recession. It wasn't a full-blown recession, but we go into a slight recession. And my business soared. It was phenomenal how it just soared. It was the weirdest thing. And then just a couple of years later, we end up going into the housing market crash, which is about five or six 
Oh, look at Elias has two, two in my TV going. So how, what's our count right now? What's our count? 14. 114, yeah. Come on, guys, keep it up. Let's go. Get it higher, get it higher. Let's go. We got to break 140. These guys invited me over and they told me they were going to hurt me if it doesn't go over 140. So put it that way, guys. All right, so let's go. Bring it up. Get up. At, I'm at two. My wife's at three. Well, Baby, we're, we're at 116 right now. 116. 116. Let's go, guys. We can do this. Uh, then the housing market crashed in 2016. That was awful. And again, my business soared. It just soared. But the peak of it was really uh, COVID. And there's just three economic failures in the United States of America. Uh, three. Oh, look at Kerry. Look at Kerry down here, man. He got three axes and logged in. This is awesome. Michael and Beth Ann and TV phone. They got three going. What's our number? What's our number? We- I think Google knows though. There's only 116 still. 116. No, it's got to go in. It's got to go up. It'll go up. It's, give it a second. They'll start counting. So then the COVID hit, guys. COVID hit. And that's when I knew everything was going to fall. And, and the business slowed down a little. But then the government steps in and starts giving out these PPL loans and these EIDL loans over $600 billion established to the small business owners, another $300 billion to people that faked it all the time, another you know, $500 million to bigger, I mean, to schools, uh, $200 million to teachers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, over a trillion dollars was spent on this deficit. Uh, and then all of a sudden, as my video, my, my business is going like this, it starts soaring again. And I just think that junk removal is recession proof long term. Uh, if you're struggling now in junk removal, which I, guys, I know, I know you're struggling out there. There's a lot of people struggling, not going to work. Uh, I'm going to tell you this. If, if you see my videos and it seems I'm busy, it's because I still have commercial accounts. OK, I was born with that silver spoon of 15 years and these commercial accounts are always going to call me no matter what the recession is. I don't do normal junk removals in the last few days. Why? Because normal people aren't calling me. But those contracts still call and guess what? They still pay. So I'm still making money that way. But I felt it, too. I think we're going to soar out of this eventually. But yes, it is a tough uh, economic. Right. I mean, the economic forecast is is tough right now. And. Do I see it get any better? I don't. I, I don't see it get any better. March, uh, April, maybe, maybe May, I see it. But maybe April, late April, I see it getting better. But I see it getting so much worse, so much worse. For people that are suffering now, you will suffer more. I think it's a good business to stay in. I think the business will will drive. Um but, but listen, listen. So I keep on hearing this, Matt and Jojo, and I think you'll agree with this. And just think about this for a second. I want you to think about this. So a lot of business, small junk removal, you get on Facebook, a lot of small junk removal companies are going bankrupt. They're seizing operations. They're closing the doors. They just don't, not going to do this. And they're doing it on the weekends only. Have you heard that? Have you seen that on Facebook? I've a lot seen of that? a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tell you something. Let's say that on a weekly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. So I want you to think about this. Everybody listening here, what's our number? 127. Guys, we got to push that number up. Let's go. Get it over 130. Let's go to 141. Come on. We got to get it going. It, it, ask your neighbors. Go next door. Get your cousin, your brother, your sister. Let's push that number up. <laughs> so here's what I'm saying is that those 10, no, no, we're going to say 20 customers. Those 20 customers that Jose's junk removal, Pedro's junk removal, uh, you know, uh, uh, Raul's junk removal, Gonzalez junk removal, that went bankrupt. They averaged 20 jobs in one week. They averaged 20 jobs in one week. Those 20 jobs that are left are not going to junk guys. They're not going to Pedro. They're not going to Juan Luis Pedro Gonzalez junk removal. You know where they're going? To 1-800-JUNK and Junk King. And this is why, Matt, because when you pick up the phone and you call Jose and he's bankrupt, doo-doo-doo, you go to the next one. You go to Juan's junk removal. And when you pick up the phone and he says, oh, no, I'm not doing it no more, my friend, no more. You know what the customer does? Forget it. I'll just pay top dollar. Franchise, franchise. They start calling the franchises. Why? Because they've been burnt too much. So don't think wacky junk removal is going to get them or junk works or trash bandit. Those jobs are lost. Those jobs, we're not getting them. Sonoma's not going to get them. 
So no, but they're not going to call you, Matt. They're going to call the big boxes. And that's what happens. Why? It's a natural conversion of life. It just happens, man. Psychologically, that's how people think. And those companies are going to soar more. So the more that we go bankrupt, the more that small mom and pop go bankrupt, the powerful junk removal companies, 1-800-JUNK, Junk King, call it junk, they'll just get stronger. And we're doing a disservice. We really are. And I think as me and you, you, Matt, and JoJo, I think we have a hand in that cookie jar. We help most of these people start. We have, a, and I know I help a lot of people start, and I know y'all help a lot of people start. Yeah. We have a responsibility to tell these people, hang on, don't go bankrupt. Because, bro, I'm telling you, when you think of a roofer or you think of shingles falling off a roof and you call a roofer, it's easy to get a roofing company out there. How can you compare roofing, roofers, to junk removal? We're not even in the same page as roofers. Carpenters, electricians, root, junk removal, that's not even the plethora of my grandma who even thinks like that. She, she just thinks the city's going to pick it up. We're not. We're low man on the totem pole. To be honest with you, if you don't see a 1-800 junk com, truck come around and, and if they didn't establish this business 15 or 20 years ago, we don't exist. We just don't exist. It's crazy how a lot of customers don't even know about anyone else but 1-800 got junk. I didn't know you guys there was even jobs out there. It's our responsibility to help them out, man. It really is. It's and that's crazy. why it's so important to post every single day and get your brand out there. And we what have 139. Yeah, we're we were, one we shot. Were just 139. <laughs> one <laughs> shot. Honey, turn on get on this video. Turn on the Google TV and get on this video. We're about to break a record right now, babe. <laughs> well, right, so so here's what I want everybody to do. I want everybody to think of somewhere they have a computer, somewhere they have an iPad or an Android phone, <coughs> or maybe your sons or your kids, we're at 139. We want to get past 141. That's what we want to do. So if everybody can help out, you can show your support for this channel, for Junk Guys right here, over here, wherever my truck is. You can help us out. We're just trying to break a record. And this record will probably need be, never be broken again, to be honest with you, because we're out here giving great advice about the economy and how things are working out for junk removal service. Uh, we're, we're, we've been helping you all out, and this is the way you can repay us back. And we've definitely broke a record <coughs> already because um, to sustain that many people for so long has we been guy, before. Look at this guy, uh, Brazos. I'm on two accounts. <laughs> so yeah, but there's so many. Uh, I can't even watch a movie this long without taking a break. Seriously, <laughs> this is like long. One, one hour and 37 damn minutes. So make sure you guys hit that like button. Check out Ricardo. Subscribe to his channel. Go check out my website so we can rank a little bit higher. And also Ricardo's website. And uh, yeah. Yeah. Was it, was, 34. it was great having you on as a guest because um, you, you, just, you have a wealth of knowledge. So we want to thank you once again. No, no problem. You know. Now, who would you stay away from when it comes to advertising? What companies would you stay away from? Like the guy that pushes the shopping cart and wants you to like advertise on the shopping cart? Because your company's the, the perfect fit for his. The golf cart. course that has a brochure or the little bench that wants you to advertise. Who would you stay away from? <laughs> so uh, I can't really answer that question. Um, oh, really? It's called Sonoma Hauling. So we're about to break it right now. She's going to get on to it. It's called Sonoma Hall. What's the name of the website? I'm sorry. I, I found it on mine. I, just type in Sonoma Hauling on the TV and your phone and it's over. We broke a record, babe. Um, <laughs> what's, what's the question one more time really fast? Who would you stay away from? Okay, so I don't advertise. Uh, it's a bad question for me to answer. Uh, just <laughs> I don't have business cards and I haven't had business cards in about six or seven years. So I just got business cards to go to um, Junk Con and they're on the dash of my truck and there's the box is still in that little wrapper. <laughs> I don't advertise. So really, uh, it's not a question I should answer, but I wouldn't advertise anywhere. I mean, I, uh, the day and age uh, of 2023, uh, 2000s, uh, just the years is the Internet age. Uh, I would stick to the Internet. I always when I based my business uh, 15 years ago, even though 
uh, Facebook and Google wasn't that business. And Google, my business was called Google Places back in the day. I always knew in my head for some reason that my business would be an online business only. And it has. I've never put a door hanger. I've never... Uh, I've never done anything like that. So when people tell me that question, I just can't answer it honestly because I don't have it any. So, so what are you going to do when you just start your business and all of a sudden you get that inbox with that guy named Paul saying, hey, I can make you rank on Google in 30 days and all this. All you got to spend is like $1,200 a month and we'll get you up there. What would you say? Okay, that's a great question. That's We're at 145, just so you know. Oh, yeah, we broke it, guys. Thank you. We're at 147 already. Oh, 147? So we hit 147 in the. Oh, wow, that's my wife. Baby, you were 146. Oh, 150. 150. 150. Woo! Oh, All right. We should have like sirens go off. And this I don't is know like, how we're going to do that. We are, I am so flattered. I, I, I think that's awesome, man. This is, this is. This is such a flattering, guys, y'all did it. Gambino, Justin, uh, Edward, Cleaning Work, J Money, Jimmy, uh, A1 Junk Hall, Edward, D DFW, Sergio, all my boys on there. I so appreciate that, guys. I show so much love from down here in Texas and California over here, guys. Uh, I, what y'all did was incredible. And look, my phones are still running right now. They're running at full power and showing us. So that's that's a great record, man. So what we awesome. hit 157 or uh, one? one? 154 was our highest. It's where we are right now. So oh, that is awesome, guys. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, so I don't advertise. Uh, what was the question one time? I forgot. I didn't forget. <laughs> I was so excited. excited. <laughs> So here's a question right here that came up. Question for Ricardo. How did you get the mattresses returns? Yes. Uh, removal for returns for Walmart. So that's a great question. I have been doing about um, six mattresses a day uh, and it won't stop. I average the highest I've ever done is 12 in one day. I charge $120 per mattress. I pick them up for Walmart and Target. Um, it's a lot of work. I will tell you that uh, the billing on stuff like that is incredible. It's really hard to keep up with all the money uh, that I have to charge them and they pay me. My wife helps me out on that. I actually have to have my wife because um, I just can't keep up with it. And I'm trying I'm trying to do it better. Um, but it's a business that doesn't seem like it's going to go away. I don't know why they hired me. Uh, Master Junker. I don't know why they picked up the phone and even called me about it. The guy did mention that he saw my website, that my pricing was really easy. And what would I give him a wholesale rate for mattresses to go to people's houses? Um, he started me out. I told him, I said, I will only do the mattresses if you pay me the same day. And he said, how about the next day? If you send me the invoice, I'll, OK, so I'll do the first couple of times I'll do it. And I was kind of pushy. I didn't want the deal. Um, he did three. I charged him like, uh, I don't know, 360, something like that. And then the next day, my wife got hit on PayPal 360. I'm like, OK, this guy's paying. I don't know what the name of the company is. I'm just going to people's houses. And then the worst thing about it, Matt and Jojo, is I was dumping these brand new mattresses at the landfill. Dumping. I was like, hey, I know you can resell those for sure. I went making the worst mistake in junk removal history. I had dumped about 30 or 40. And I'm doing this for like a month. Two weeks, maybe two weeks, maybe two weeks. Yeah, it was like maybe a week. I don't even know, dude. And I'm just dumping all this stuff. And my sister, who's head of operations at the retail store, says, maybe we can sell them. She starts posting them. We're just blowing them out. We just blow them out. So uh, I'm getting paid 120. She's selling them for 100. She's making 50. I'm making 50. Um, and then all of a sudden, she's giving me $100 every other day, 200 bucks here. The most I ever got from my sister was $800. And one day, she sold that many damn mattresses. She must have sold like 16 of them, dude. It was yeah, selling them for a hundred bucks is a cheap price if they're brand new too. Yeah, yeah, don't know they're brand new. They're brand new. They're in bags and they're in boxes. Uh, but other than give you the advice to tell you, I wouldn't know. They called me. I executed. Like I said, I'm not lazy. I went out, knocked them out, and I resold every one of them after like two or three weeks of doing them. Um, like I said, I average about. Uh, I guess on a slow day, even on those ice days that I wasn't working, they were coming through. They were coming through. It was crazy. And I'm like, dude, it's iced. And I'm thinking it's iced all in the United States. It wasn't. It was just Texas. We were down ice, you know. So, so what are some hot items that you do sell? Out here we sell couches, dressers. patio furniture, dressers go super fast. What do you guys sell out there? Um, refrigerators sell pretty good. Um, of course, Matt, I, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not head of the retail. I don't know really. But if it was something that I used to sell back in the day, it would be um, 
uh, bikes uh, and refrigerators. They sell pretty fast. They sell pretty, but now it's just mattresses all the time. Nice. It's crazy that people will buy mattresses, even though there's state law in Texas that you can't resell mattresses. All right. So I think that's it. We were on for an hour and 44 minutes. Make sure you guys smash that like button. We hit 154 subscribers, so we're definitely going to do it again. And make sure you guys go check out Ricardo's channel and let him know that Sonoma Strong of Holland sent you. And yeah. JoJo, is there anything else you want to say or what? No, I think we covered lots of good stuff. And it was a live that a lot of people were looking forward to. And I feel that it delivered. Awesome. I'm glad I'm glad y'all asked me to be on the channel. I'm, I, that was really cool, y'all. Uh, you'll definitely be on one of my channels. Um, just to let you know, I've been asked by many people to do videos like this. I, I get asked all the time and I don't I turn them down. I just I don't know. It's not that I don't like them. So anybody who's seen this, uh, Andrew or anybody else or anybody that have turned down, uh, I apologize. I'm just not in the really state of mind to do it. I just don't really want to do it. Um, not because I don't want to boost your channel. It's just maybe I'm just not in the mood. I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't, I've never drank or smoked in my whole life. So I don't, I don't do that. Why? I don't know. I don't want to do a video. I don't <laughs> like interviews. Uh, but I saw y'all and I knew that y'all had a great channel. Y'all had great, uh, it was like, y'all had already built it up already. You know what I mean? Y'all built up your channel to something. And I said, okay, they have a great channel. You're legit. You know what I mean? You don't have 50 or 500 viewers or subscribers, whatever we call them. And I knew that, hey, these guys are established. Let's just jump on their channel. I'll help them out. We, You help me out and stuff like that. Um, and and I'll do, you know what I mean? And plus, I met y'all. Y'all were really nice. You introduced yourself, Matt, to me at, at, at uh, Junk Con. And, I, you know, I said I went into your class. I stole the idea from, uh, from um, you know, the stories, the shorts. I stole that from you. I deliberately went in there with intentions to steal information from you. And I did. I, I, I got that idea from you. So it, it works out. It worked out really great for me. And when you asked, I said, hell yeah, we'll do it. Let's knock it out. Yeah, we appreciate you hopping on and giving all this great information. You know what I mean? You are one of the first guys to ever do YouTube. And we appreciate you hopping on. Yeah, we have Justin that says the link doesn't work for Ricardo's channel. So as soon as we're done here, I'll go right into the description and I'll see what I did wrong. Joe, Joe, what the hell? Let me see real know. quick. Let me go on there real yeah, quick. Let's see. find out. Let's see. Yeah, the link, man. Are you sleeping? The whole damn time. Let's see. The whole time my link hasn't worked, guys. Okay. It has not working. Okay. Well, I'll fix that as soon as I, as soon as I, um, as soon as we're She done. did you dirty, Ricardo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, she'll fix it. So we have actually <laughs> probably a couple hundred views on it. So we'll fix it ASAP. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My wife is being on these videos. She wouldn't even come in here and do it. <laughs> she doesn't go to work with me. I don't I don't care. It's not a big deal. But she doesn't even want like being in my videos at all. Whatever. That's not she don't want to hop on the channel real quick and say what's up? Nah, she's good. She's good. She, I don't think she has any interest. You know, one thing I do like about being in a relationship with my wife uh she doesn't care how much money I make. Um, she doesn't know what I make. She doesn't ask. She never asks how much money I make. And I love it. I'm like, okay, so if I make a thousand bucks or five hundred dollars or fifty bucks, to her, she just goes and puts on her makeup or walks the dog or plays with whatever she was gonna do. She doesn't care at all. And I love that about her. And, you know, she stays out of my business. Uh, this is my business I built that I had before her, and she doesn't care really doesn't care man and I, I love that she doesn't work with me I, I asked her one day to come to work I had to drag her to go to work that is not I think I, I did drag her. I would do it like once every once in a once, while. once in every, every once in a while <laughs> <laughs> she sat in the truck while I worked so we got the number to 154 yeah yes. 154 so I don't think that will ever get broken until the next time we hop on a live again so we appreciate it Ricardo and uh, enjoy the rest of your day Yes, sir. Y'all have and a happy, happy Valentine's Day. Hopefully, you guys go eat some good food tomorrow. Oh shit! Is that tomorrow? Oh That's my tomorrow. god! Okay. All right, go Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye, guys. Have All a good right, day. Well, there you have it. Hopefully, this video uploads, and the JoJo got to fix that link. Yeah, I do, and it's almost two hours long. So. I, we've never had a video that long, so. Hopefully you guys liked it, and we'll catch you on the next one. And remember, we love all you guys.